So guys, today on the channel we have Ink Gin from Hus Distillers, made right here in New South Wales. It was supposedly the very first colour changing gin that was ever released back in 2015. So stick around and find out if it tastes as good as it looks beautiful. So guys, as you can see, the ink gin is a beautiful bright purple color and that's the color of the gin itself, not the color of the glass bottle. That purple color, it comes from an ingredient called butterfly pea flour, which is added after distillation. Now, I don't know if you remember back to your high school chemistry classes, but butterfly pea flour is actually a natural pH indicator. Kind of like you might've played around with it like red cabbage, Obviously, probably don't want to be putting cabbage in a gin, but butterfly pea flour, it's fairly neutral flavor. It doesn't add much in terms of taste, but it does add that color. And when you add something acidic, it goes pink. So in terms of adding something acidic, that could be obviously lemon juice or lime juice, any citrus really, but also tonic water and soda water are lightly acidic too from the carbonation. Now, in terms of what it's going to taste like, I don't know exactly what to expect yet. All I can see on the bottle is it says the original beautiful gin. Ink is pot stilled with a blend of 12 Australian native, traditional and exotic botanicals from around the world. So sometimes these colored gins, they tend to have a little bit of sugar added and they can be a little bit more on the liqueur side. I'm hoping that's not the case with this one. It does say dry gin, so let's give it a taste and see what it's all about. Oh great, the first thing I get is juniper. I get that piney residuous note. We've obviously got a gin on our hands here but there's a lot of citrus going on here. They definitely use lemon myrtle. I'm without even knowing, I'm sure they use lemon myrtle because I get that as a very strong note. Get a little bit of orange peel too, but a little bit of spice, which is nice just to give it that complexity. Let's see if it tastes as good as it smells. Okay, when I taste it, the first thing I get is citrus, like a hell of a lot of citrus and mainly lemon myrtle. Now I've said it before, sometimes I find a little bit too much lemon myrtle can give this kind of almost strepsil-like flavor. It's very, very strong on the lemon myrtle. That's the first thing I get. I mean, if you like citrus flavors, you're definitely gonna like this gin. I feel like the lemon myrtle does overpower things just a little bit. I would prefer it to be a little bit more tamed down and kind of in balance with all the other flavors, but there's definitely some complexity there too. I'm getting a nice wave of juniper. There's also a little bit of peppery spice, earthy coriander seed to kind of ground it all. And also there's some light elegant floral notes on top. But again, it's really hard to pick up those little things because that lemon myrtle is really punchy. Now, don't get me wrong, the ink gin is downright delicious, but it's definitely more on the contemporary side where the other botanicals come in above the juniper. In terms of flavor, if I had to liken this to another gin that I've tried before, it's kind of a less citrus extreme version of something like Malfi. It does have a little bit more complexity too, which is really nice and the juniper character comes through a little bit stronger too. So based upon that, how would I drink the ink gin? Well, I found in terms of a gin and tonic that elderflower tonic works really well. I did really enjoy those kind of subtle floral notes on the ink gin and really kind of elevating them helps to balance out that strong lemon myrtle character. Ironically, after adding elderflower tonic to balance out the lemon myrtle, if you add a wedge of lemon, it works really well. Not only does the acidity and lemon help along that color changing effect which obviously with ink that's exactly what you want but that lemon myrtle flavor is more along the lines of a lemongrass or a lemon verbena rather than a fresh citrus so adding in a wedge of lemon really gives it an extra dimension as for a cocktail keep it simple we're all here for that beautiful color changing effect so go with a sour or a variation thereof. Something like a Southside works great because you can add that little extra dimension from the mint, or even maybe you want a little bit of elderflower liqueur or elderflower syrup to just kind of elevate all those floral notes in the gin. So Ink Gin, it's around $80 a bottle, so a little bit on the pricier side, but overall it's a pretty good gin. And if you take it to a party, it's gonna be an absolute showstopper and surely it's gonna impress everyone with that beautiful color changing effect. And definitely if you love a super simple citrus forward gin, easy drinking and very approachable, this one's gonna be for you. So guys, if you like this review and you wanna discover more gins just like the ink, start now, click subscribe just up here so you don't miss any new reviews as they come out. Otherwise, click through the playlist here and see all the other gin reviews on the channel. Until next time guys, cheers.